Hey everyone. Michelle, how's it going? Pretty good, how about you? Not bad, uh, I'm at the Cloud Foundry uh, Summit, which has been really uh, fantastic so far. Nice. Yeah. Congratulations, Matt Klein, and all the other Lyft folks. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if we're to cover it this time. What's up? Weren't you in a cupboard last time? Me? Oh yeah, that's my usual. But I'm actually working out of the Boulder office today, so um, I've got like some pretty mountain views. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> this is the view. Uh, actual vitamin D being taken in today. Yeah, and fresh <laughs> air. Chris, mountain air. Very nice. I'm in Madrid, which is Ooh. lovely. That is fancy. Yeah. Yo, Spain is so yeah. beautiful. Like, it's lovely. I love Spain. Yeah, it's really good. I remember going to Madrid and be like, how is like the fence gorgeous? And like <laughs> the roads and like every little thing is like so beautiful. <laughs> hey, Chris. Howdy, howdy. Morning or afternoon, depending on what part of the world you're in. <laughs> We'll get started in a few minutes. All right, might as well get started. Um, is Brian Grant here? I don't see him unless he's dialed in. I think he said he wasn't gonna be able to make it. Okay, cool. And I know Alexis and Brendan already sent their uh, regrets, so that's fine, cool. Uh, maybe, maybe he didn't, maybe I'm mistaken, let me look. Yeah, I know Brendan said like, maybe. <laughs> so, it's jet lagged or something. Um, Was it Brendan who's in Korea? 
yeah, he was coming back from Korea or something. I could, I could definitely understand the jet lag. Um, so we got six, six out of nine folks. So we have quorum. Uh, let's go to the agenda. Um, so uh, a quick little agenda today. Um, we'll have uh, kind of the chair election results. Uh, you know, we'll go over some of the kind of voting that's been going on with a variety of things uh, from projects uh, to SIGs. Um, we have some discussions around um, kind of archiving projects. Uh, you know, we'll go through the community kind of backlog of which presentations to put on the schedule for next week and uh, then open it up to any Q&A that folks have. So first, uh, first bit of news, let's go next slide. Um, in terms of our TOC chair uh, election results, um, Liz Rice uh, has won the TOC chair seat. So that's awesome. Good news. Um, she'll be uh, leading uh, these lovely meetings uh, moving forward. So, um, you know, we'll be working together to make sure that uh, she's prepared to uh, take the position on. So I'm, I'm super excited. Uh, Liz, feel free to make any comments. <laughs> well, just thanks very much. And, um, you know, obviously, I won't be able to, it's not just me, it will be with the support of everybody on the TOC and the wider co contributor community. But I am really excited. I'm also really glad, Chris, you're going to run this, right? Because I had half an hour's notice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, no worries. We'll, we'll work Thank together. you. <laughs> we'll pick up afterwards and then come up with a good plan to kind of work together on this. So Sounds good. Sounds good. Cool. Awesome. Uh, in terms of uh, project voting updates, so uh, OPA was uh, announced uh, to the incubator this morning, um, voting for uh, Creo and Fluent D are still going on, and those are for the incubation and graduation uh, levels. Creo coming in as a kind of a new project, even though it technically lives under um, Kubernetes SIGs. Uh, and then also CNCF SIGs um, have been uh, recently approved, and we'll be working uh, on, on those uh, soon, which I'll cover in a little bit. But for TOC and community members, uh, please get your votes in for uh, Creo and Fluent D that I probably will close those this uh, this week. Any other questions on, uh, on, on, on the voting before moving on? Cool. All right. So, um, you know, one thing we have coming up uh, is uh, projects that live in the sandbox are essentially reviewed by the TOC on an annual basis. Uh, based on the process. So uh, this basically, we, we almost have something every month for the rest of the uh, rest of the year, kind of depending on how, how you look at it. But uh, next month, uh, cloud events and telepresence uh, will be on kind of the review block. And then uh, moving on, we have a bunch of other projects that are kind of scheduled uh, throughout the year. I basically did it all the way up to the end of uh, 20, uh, 2019 uh, for, for folks. So any questions or concerned uh, about this? Just kind of wanted to make the TOC and the wider community aware of, of kind of what's um, uh, on the docket um, in, in the future. It's a, you know, it was about a year since we, a little over a year since we created the sandbox level. So a lot of these things are kind of finally, finally bubbling up for, uh, for review. I have a quick question. Yep. Um, just, to, uh, just to get an idea of precedence, um, there is a, a sandbox project who wants to be, um, who wants to go for incubation. Uh, they asked me if they should wait till, or like when that would be appropriate. Um, and I'm just wondering in the past, have people waited till their sandbox like annual review? I know sandbox is new, so I don't even know if there is uh, precedent here, but um, how does that work? They're able to basically uh, do the incubation request at any time, there's no, um, okay. Whenever Great. they feel they're ready and they meet the requirements and want to posit the, 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 the TOC voting uh, on them. So. Great. I told them that, so I'm really glad I didn't lie. <laughs> Thank so you. The precedent is Harbor, which uh, went from sandbox to incubation three or four months after they came in. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, there's no, 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 no timeline. And if they do that, then they potentially get out of an annual review since um, as part of that, it's basically uh, good enough for of a formal review. Um, any other questions from, from folks? Yeah, do we also have an annual review process for incubating projects? Nope, it's not, re uh, it's not required, um, at least based on the, the current documentation of how things we have structured. Um, you know, with over 30 projects now, you could imagine um, if we did that, it would eat up 
quite a bit of time. I think the TOC wants to do that. We're we're able to do it. I would just be worrisome about the amount of time that would take. I think it's okay for the TOC to say, hey, maybe this particular project, we would like to have them come and present to kind of see where things are. Maybe we feel things are a little bit shaky. Um, you know, with the archiving discussion today, maybe that's something uh, that could be an option if there's a project that we feel isn't doing well or, or, or you would like more oversight on, that, that could be one route. But I'm all ears. Like, it's, it's, it's kind of hard to do this in a scalable fashion if we have prior reviews, I think, from, from all projects. Yeah, I, I guess I have two thoughts on that. One is, yeah, my question was really triggered by the archiving question yeah. and whether we should have a bit of a more rigorous sort yeah. of reason to address possible archiving perhaps by having an review. And the other thing is just opening the question that if we're going to broaden the idea of having more sandbox projects, these annual reviews can't be very heavyweight. We're gonna to have to keep them pretty lightweight if we're gonna make the admission criteria low. So we might need to think about that. Yeah, I mean, I totally, totally agree. One, one interesting thing about the archiving discussion is, you know, last year, I think it was Alexis brought up a lot of, you know, it would be great if we would have like a project health dashboard so you could kind of easily see the status of projects, right? If a project doesn't have a commit in the last, you know, three months or six months, is it because it's super mature or is it because the community is kind of dead? Um, so we, we, we took an initial stab at that and I put the link um in uh the zoom chat they could kind of take a peek and you know that could potentially be used by the toc and, and others to you know make that type of judgment call but um um you know all years i'm trying to figure out how to do this in a scalable fashion chris i think the the, the proposed model for scaling this is the sigs yeah. um and and i think it would be perfectly reasonable to have the sigs review every project every year whether it's sandbox incubation or graduated for that matter, um, and present the TOC for the very summarized, um, you know, we think it's fine to stay there. We think it should graduate. We think it should be uh, archived, et cetera. I think, I think that's the proposed way of scaling this. Okay, I think uh, Bob, Bob, Bob Wise has raised his hand, so. Yeah, um, <clears throat> I think um, Maybe one thing that isn't clear is whether it's okay for projects to go into the sandbox and sit there for a long time. Um, my, my personal view is that that should be fine. Um, I know of a number of projects that are, have been at least informally chatting about like, hey, we just need a neutral ground place to collaborate on a, on a project between several companies. And I, I, don't, I don't necessarily think that the sandbox is a pipeline of projects headed to graduation. It's it, like there are going to be a lot of projects that probably sit there for a long time. And um, maybe I'm not sure if it's clear to folks, clear to the folks outside, whether that's OK and something we welcome or not. Yeah, that's a that's a that's a fair point. I think that is uh, I'd have to do a second pass on the sandbox guidelines, but that that's probably not as clear as as it should be. Well, one thing to Quinton's point is as someone that may have, um, I don't want to say like PTSD from, from the Apache Foundation, but doing kind of, you know, reports all the time from a project thing it, it is a huge time sink. So my advice would be to try to automate that as much as possible. So whether it's, you know, improving the metrics from dev stats to take in more data, but like a lot, a lot of the kind of review could be almost automated in, in, in my opinion versus asking project maintainers to manually submit reports. Yeah, yeah, that, that seems reasonable to me. I, I was just doing some math. So we got six SIGs and we got 12 months. Um, so potentially every SIG could just have a, um, a report back twice a year to say, here's all the projects that we have and here's our take on, you know, the health of them in general and uh, sort of call that a day. And that, that could be a, you know, a 10 minute a slot in the TOC, you know, yeah. once a month kind of a thing. You would have one SIG come back and give you a summary of all of their projects um, with proposals as to, you know, things that might be put up for graduation or things that might be put up for uh, archiving, et cetera. And, and most of the load of that would be, you know, inside the SIG. Yeah, I think I think that's um, that that's fair.
any other um, thoughts uh, on, on this particular topic? All right, cool. We'll move on to the next next slide. Um, cool. So, a lot of you, I'm sure, are aware. Um, you know, given that the schedule for KubeCon, uh, Cloud Native Con, um, you know, Europe was posted that uh, we have a big conference coming up um, where we should probably get around 10,000 folks, which is a little bit terrifying at some level, but um, it's awesome to see the community grow. Uh, for the wider community, this is the final week for if you're interested in, in sponsoring at any level or doing like a little uh, reception or whatever, whatever's all those little things in the prospectus, this is the final week uh, to do it. So please reach out to, you know, our events team, events at cncf.io if you're interested in uh, sponsoring. Um, and of course, we have uh, China and North America uh, events uh, recently. As an interesting note, um, we recently did a... Uh, uh, Kubernetes Day, uh, as kind of you know, we've gotten some feedback from the community that we need you know you know be good to have like kind of smaller, uh, more regional focused events, and we did one in India, which we posted the videos recently, which I think went pretty well. I know if Liz, you want to you know share some thoughts on that since you were um, you know there uh, helping helping run that, but I think it was a kind of a great way to uh, you know grow uh, the community, kind of more regional. Uh, events that are a little bit smaller uh, in focus, but um, you know, since Liz, you're in control of the uh, program, feel free to give some thoughts. Yeah, I mean, for sure, that was 900 people there who gave up their Saturday and seemed extremely excited about having an event, you know, local to them that they could, you know, they could they could get to was accessible to them. Uh, we did it as a single track. Uh, event, I think maybe going forward, we want to look at maybe having two tracks because there was definitely quite a spread of folks who are new to the whole cloud native world versus people who are really very experienced. So having a bit more spread of uh, of topics going forward. But the oh, the other thing is the sponsor booths were absolutely mobbed. I don't know if it's because they were giving away great swag, but you could not move for people up there. So yeah, that was it was very very good. Yeah, we, we, we plan on doing more of these types of things in the future and also we'll be bringing forth a plan for kind of uh, cloud native days that are kind of more community run and Kubernetes days that will be run by uh, foundation. So look for that news fairly soon. We're, we're, we're working on it. Cool. All right. Uh, Moving on, so uh, <laughs> so this has been a fun kind of um, uh, effort that uh, for some of the newer TOC members, um, you know, we've been kind of involved brokering um, uh, kind of a <laughs> uh, bridging these two communities that have kind of been a conflict for, for quite a while, but you know, I'm kind of happy to announce that they finally have come to an agreement on merging the open census and open tracing uh, projects under kind of one new uh, brand that they're trying to come up with um, uh, under the community. They haven't chosen this kind of new brand name, but uh, it's hopefully going to be finalized, uh, you know, fair, fairly soon. Um, I offered uh, open consensus, uh, but uh, I don't think they're going to go uh, with that one, unfortunately. Uh, in terms of a process question, um, you know, uh, if, you know, th there's an opportunity for them to completely present to the TOC and wider community and go through the typical project, uh, you know, approval uh, process uh, that we already have in place. Um, the other kind of uh, way to think about this is uh, when the Linkerd uh, project kind of merged in Conduit as Linkerd2, they essentially presented to the community about their plans. Uh, everyone kind of okayed it. There was no formal vote. Um, you know, how does the TOC feel um, this should be approached with this kind of new merged uh, entity because they intend to do this under, uh, under CNCF. So um, it could just be folded under open tracing and there's a new brand name or they kind of go through the formal process we have in place. Um, I don't know how people feel about this. We've kind of done both types of things in the past. So I'd like to kind of learn from the TOC and maybe the water community how they, how they feel about this. Uh, from my perspective, it, it makes me a little uncomfortable to just assume that if a project changes major direction, that they would automatically come in under, under some other project. Um, I, I mean, I think it can happen in certain cases, and maybe this is one of those cases, but I, I think it's worth a larger discussion on a case-by-case on a -case basis. 
Yeah, I'd, uh, I'd opt for the formal vote route and just um, kind of redo the process. It shouldn't be that yeah. difficult, um, but it makes sense. Yeah, because there's a question, uh, you know, as to if, if something wants to come back in, you know, and a project, let's say that they were incubation and they majorly changed direction, should they automatically come back in as incubation or should they go back to sandbox or something like that? So it, it does seem like having a process and, and, and doing a vote probably makes sense. I mean, this is a messy thing because like, I think, you know, you have the Linkerd conduit stuff um, as an example there. Conduit was not a CNCF project, if I'm correct. And so essentially Linkerd invited Conduit in. I mean, it was yeah. all buoyant, but, you know, um, and sort of essentially imported a bunch of code into their project and it was a major change for the project. I think Fluent, Fluent Bit is another example where essentially it was a rewrite re-implementation of a part of the project that, you know, was sort of a sub-incubation inside of that project to actually do a new effort. And so I think, you know, there's sort of a, well, what's the name of the sort of the, the <laughs> boat where they replaced all the planks and it was like, is it still the same boat? Like as these projects evolve and as they sort of renew themselves, are they still the same project over time? What what defines a project? And I mean, they're getting very philosophical here. But <laughs> no, no, it, it's actually not. Uh, I've I've thought about this a lot, and I, I think that those are interesting cases to look at. And I think in some of those cases, you can make a strong argument that those projects should have come in as a separate sandbox project. Um, so I, I I think my personal feeling is that we should do the process. And if they want to come in as an incubation, we should have a proposal and do a vote. Yeah. Oh, Brian said sure. the bit was there from the beginning, so maybe I'm incorrect. I seem to remember that it, it, it hit the, the stage later. For, correct. For, for it, Conduit, just to, uh, in terms of correction, is they did present to the TOC of their plans of kind of merging at Linkerd, and uh, there was a basically discussion of whether a formal vote was required or anyone would have any issues with this happening. No one objected, so. Um, Hey, Joe, just for your classical rep, uh, references, it's the ship of Theseus or Theseus That's right, paradox. The ship of Theseus. <laughs> and uh, Wally being the best contemporary example where he'd replaced all of his parts over time. But um, I, I would just say that to put a little bit finer point on it, um, I, I think everybody agrees that this couldn't happen in a stealth way or in a way that the community is not aware of. I, I think the key question is what should the default be? So the precedent for uh, Linkerd and Conduit, which the TOC is not bound by, but was that they presented to the TOC and the, and the community, everybody was aware of it, but it would have taken a proactive vote of the TOC to say this isn't allowed, as opposed to the other way of saying, oh no, it takes six, six votes to allow it. And, and I would just point out that there, there is a tradition of deference to the projects. Yeah. Um, but I, again, it, it is up to the TOC to decide. I'm, I'm slightly leaning that way and in, in that so long as we get the information, we get the exposure to, to what the plan is, if we start saying well, we have to have a vote at a point when somebody wants to import some code into a project, you know, we're not going to go to the, the logical extreme of that is we have a vote every time somebody wants to do a pull request and we're not going to do that. So. We, we forced the Linkerd project to vote amongst all of its maintainers that this was okay and so on. So it kind of for, you know, forced them to do that and make sure their community was okay with it and also uh, present to the TOC to allow any objections. I think when the essence of the project evolves or changes, the scope of the project changes, maybe we should ask for a vote then because yeah. Uh, then your your end goal has changed and it's more than just a, a pull request which is just like modifying your code or like major version change iterating on something you already have lots of architectural changes underneath the essence there is still the same but this yeah. merger is evolving um, the end goal of, of the projects project by merging too so in that scenario, I would like some understanding of what's going on, some transparency, and uh, just, just to make sure we're on the same page. I don't think it should be a big, long process, but maybe it's an easier vote. Um, so, yeah. Okay. Just one last comment. Um, 
uh, so, so first of all, just to recognize, yeah, I think there's a, there's a big slippery slope here where, you know, certain things seem clear and, and other th things like PRs seem clear that we shouldn't review those. And I think it's very difficult to sort of decide ahead of time um, uh, on a general rule. Um, and secondly, if, if the SIGs are going to be uh, checking on the health of their projects every six months, um, usually these changes don't happen, you know, overnight, like a, a big, you know, version, Kubernetes version one to Kubernetes version two, which one might argue is a, you know, major re-implementation and would require another vote by the TOC, just to give an example. That, that's something that the SIGs should presumably um, escalate as and when required, um, rather than have, you know, every project that changes version number have to perhaps go through a vote. I don't know if that makes sense, but uh, what I'm suggesting is that we put most of the responsibility on the SIGs to identify when things like this are happening and, and escalate them to the TOC when they think it is appropriate. Yeah. So, sounds good. I mean, I have definitely enough feedback from folks to bring it back to the, the projects uh, when they're ready and, and get them on the docket to, to present once they have more formal formal plans in place. Any other uh, thoughts on this? I think it's great to actually see, you know, folks joining efforts. So it's a good result regardless. <laughs> there, uh, I'll just put it this way. There was a very entertaining meeting. I think it was last October with uh, Brian Cantrell and uh, I kind of moderating them, but these two communities. And it's nice to kind of, uh, see the output of that finally. <laughs> All right, um, I think that's enough discussion on, on this topic. Look forward to kind of an update soon uh, uh, from that. So next discussion point, uh, you know, it, we've been discussing this, you know, for a while, CNCF is over three years old now. Um, you know, I think it's healthy always for communities to uh, essentially sometimes go through spring cleaning and archive. Things don't always have to uh, exist within you know, uh, the project, especially as technology trends and maturities and communities evolve over time. So we've discussed the notion of uh, formalizing how to archive uh, projects um, and also uh, you know, related to that also having kind of a transparent health metrics so it's easier to kind of come to these, this, <coughs> this discussion. So there's a PR uh, out there with a basic process um, uh, for archiving projects. I would love the uh, TOC and community kind of take a look at that since, um, you know, I think it needs fresh eyes since it's last been proposed. Uh, and then, you know, just like with anything else out there, I think, you know, always having a pilot, you know, project or pilot something uh, to go with with this uh, type of process could be useful to kind of ensure that it works. So, so basically two questions. One, um, you know, <laughs> what should we do for archiving projects? And two, do we have any candidate projects potentially that we'd want to run this through? So. I'll open it up to the TOC and community for uh, discussion here. I think we all um, probably have Rocket in mind as a possible archiving candidate. Um, I think as far as the process is concerned, um, I think an important part of this should be going to the maintainers of a project and saying, is this something you want to come and present about? Do you want to, do you consider yourselves active? Is it something that you would continue to benefit from by being in the CNCF? Yeah. Um, I feel like that should be the first step in any archiving process. Seems fair. It's almost like an appeal. <laughs> Yeah. yeah almost yeah because if if the maintainers actually say you know what that's going to be a relief then there isn't a you know it's fine or they may need help but yeah it's 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 complicated right so yeah, yeah. any other questions thoughts concerns you know otherwise i'm happy to kind of move all the discussion to the pull request, but it would be good to kind of have like a 1.0 of the process in place at least over the next 
uh, you know, month, month or two. I mean, I haven't read the poll request. Um, do you have like the TLDR on sort of what this means? Uh, basically, the uh, initial thought was, uh, you know, two thirds, uh, you know, super majority vote for the P TOC to archive uh, something. And then essentially what would happen is the project would essentially just live uh, under the Linux Foundation and any CNCF branding, marketing support, dollars or whatever would be uh, essentially removed from it. It would just kind of be a, an, an independent project that just lives under the uh, LF with minimal support. Why under the LF? Because I think, you know, if if somebody comes along and they're like, hey, we want to actually reboot this, we want to take this IP and move forward with it, but yeah. hey, can you transfer it to us? Or like, you know, maybe we don't, like who gets to vote and decide on that? Uh, it would be essentially the TOC and the projects would have to come to conclusion. Once, the, once things are technically in a non-for-profit, it's not really feasible for it to go back to a for-profit entity. Like they well, I mean, it could be, let's say that like somebody wants to resurrect Rocket under the Apache yeah. Foundation. Uh, yeah, that, that, that is fine. We could have a discussion. I think that would be a case by case. I mean, obviously, 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 what I'm trying to say, though, is that if it's actually archived under the LF, yeah. then the TOC has no standing to actually help guide that stuff post archival. Like, Correct. why doesn't it remain archived under under the CNCF? Uh, yeah, that could be potentially it depends what you want to mean by archive archive can mean like you know, we, we shut down the repos or archive can mean we just dissociate any CNCF branding and the project continue to just kind of run how it does, you know, whether it's, you know, they commit every once, once a year, or once every six months. Yeah. I, I mean, I, I, just the thing is that like, you know, it's, you know, things don't always stay dead. And so the question is, you know, what happens after that, who gets to decide? And so it, it seems like if somebody submits something to the CNCF, even if it is sort of in this, you know, uh, atrophied state, it should, it should still stay within the CNCF. Yeah. Okay. That's fair. I think, I think the key point is we don't want to, you know, if, it, if a project's archived, we decide to not actively promote it or market it or. Right, exactly. And, and, you know, when we give more, you know, users the appropriate caveats around, around that. Correct. Are there any other um, foundations under the LF that do the archiving under LF? Instead of their foundation? I'd have to, I mean, we have had projects that may have been in a umbrella organization have spun out to an independent thing. I don't know if that was necessarily an archival thing. I think the JS community has some notion of archiving. I'd, I'd have to go look. Okay, that's fine. It's not important. Thank you. A brief comment. Um, the, the distinction between archived and sandbox doesn't seem very large in that we don't provide marketing or much support for sandbox projects either. Um, maybe, maybe archiving actually just means going back to sandbox. Uh, just a thought. <laughs> I, I would put that in the PR. I think sandbox projects still get access to like the CNCF service desk and staff occasionally. It's just they get very minimal marketing uh, resources. In this case, archiving to me would mean they just don't get any support. Uh, period. Can you all hear? Uh, yeah, someone's on the phone. Hey. Sorry. Uh, this is Dan Shaw. Um, no JS land. Uh, so a couple of good examples in the now OpenJS Foundation would be Dojo uh, and jQuery. So you know th those projects are uh, you know continue on as uh, you know kind of projects that exist uh, and are, are essentially in archival mode and, and have moved uh, from the JS Foundation, actually from the jQuery Foundation to the um, JS Foundation and now to the OpenJS Foundation, continuing that, that uh, uh, ongoing coverage of, of having the, the governance of the foundation. Thanks, Dan. Any other thoughts, concerns on this? Otherwise, I, I think having the discussion on the pull request is probably the best, best way forward. All right, um, let's, let's uh, move discussion to the PR and we'll catch up on this and hopefully we could uh, 
come to a conclusion for a V10 for the archiving process. Uh, project presentation meetings. So yeah, uh, we started to do these uh, last month um, for the first time. Um, you know, we have a backlog that we're actually starting to chip away at, which is awesome. Uh, I think this is a good idea. So thank you to whoever proposed uh, <laughs> us to, to have a meeting dedicated to project presentations. Um, the, the next one is coming up next week. Uh, I have one project slotted right now that already volunteered and sent a presentation. So uh, we have room for two more. So I don't know if there's anything the TOC would like to see on the, on the docket, but I think this is the time to propose since we're only about a, uh, a week away from, from that particular uh, meeting. Any thoughts on the TOC based on the current backlog or something they would like to see? Not exactly. Um, I, I don't know if this is the right time to make this point, but um, I think I mentioned on one of the, the mailing lists the idea that those uh, backlog items that are allegedly in progress in the yeah. backlog, yeah. I really feel like they should have owners and it would be great if we could try to um, assign some owners and get those items actually kind of, well, having somebody who takes responsibility for pushing those through. Sounds, sounds, I think after this meeting, we could, we could sync up, you know, given that you're chair now, we could kind of um, have a discussion on, on how to, how to do this and, and, and essentially watch that backlog. Okay. Well, actually, if there was other people on the TOC who, who felt that they wanted to drive forward some of those issues or take some kind of ownership, I think that would be really great. Yeah, feel free to loop me in on that conversation, Liz. Um, however you feel like uh, delegating. Now they'd help. Yeah, I can try and find time also. Just send stuff my way. Great. Yeah, I mean, it's it's things like, you know, these graduation applications where, you know, just somebody needs to kind of make sure that it's really going to happen and that we're really doing the whatever due diligence we need to do. I feel like actually taking ownership of the PR would help clarify who's making these things happen. Yep. Sounds good. We'll, we'll take a, we'll take a, I mean, I will personally spend some time and kind of go through and then see if uh, we could assign or find the ones with no assigns and, and ping TOC members. See you Thanks, Chris. Yep. All right. So we'll, uh, we'll figure it out if there's a project that wants to volunteer for the next meeting, let me know, but um, uh, we at least have one scheduled that uh, I think already has met the minimum sandbox sponsorship uh, at least. Um, Let's go on to the next slide. Oh, final call that um, if you know any students out there that are interested in having an opportunity to uh, work on CNCF projects, there is summer code. Uh, the student applications are closing April 9th. We actually have a ton of projects participating on uh, as part of this process. So it's an um, awesome program. So highly recommend you do your best to share that CNCF is participating in this and students uh, apply given that um, the <laughs> the date uh, for student application closes on on April 9th, which is pretty soon. Cool. All right, CNCF SIGs. Um, we discussed this that the vote kind of went through. Uh, one kind of new bit of information outside of the process being approved is we have uh, TOC steel <coughs> liaisons for uh, the initial set of SIGs. Uh, thank you, uh, Quinton and. Alexis for driving a lot of, uh, of this to get it off the ground. If you go to the next slide, the kind of proposed process here is uh, we'll pilot it with one SIG first, uh, kind of in the governance security space and kind of get that uh, going, trying to figure out um, you know, where it will live, how we're gonna kind of document it in GitHub and so on. So we'll start there and then you know, after that works well, we'll follow on with all the, the, the rest of the SIGs. So um, anyone have any questions? Uh, here. Cool. I was just curious about the choice of that particular SIG as the first one. Uh, you know, in my opinion, the folks in the governance security space have been uh, more than willing to spend the time uh, to uh, kind of get this off the ground. They've actually volunteered. Um, so that's kind of how I've made uh, the choice versus the uh, others. So 
also the kind of safe security, uh, whatever the name they have uh, for that current uh, group, uh, has been kind of a pilot for a lot of the initial uh, SIG uh, process discussions and so on. Yeah, I guess I guess my main concern there is that that particular working group um, has not produced the white papers and things that the TOC yeah. requested and it's taken a while. So I guess we just need to be very vigilant there. Yeah. I'd also I think, like oh, to speak to Sorry, you got <laughs> Hi. I'd like, this is Sarah Allen. I've been, I'm one of the co-chairs of the Safe Working Group. And we had some mixed messages from the TOC about priorities. And um, so the white paper was many, one of many things that we were working on. And it was actually deprioritized because we were focused on, you know, rightly or wrongly, on um, a process for evaluating um, projects and understanding how they fit into an ecosystem that would drive the safety and security of the whole community. And so that was the approach that we were taking and we produced a number of artifacts, the use cases and personas, the administrator's bill of rights, and we're working through a process for project um, evaluation. So that was, and then we you know, had a number of conversations with other TOC members and started to prioritize the white paper. So it was really a matter of, you know, perhaps it was a miscommunication on priorities of the TOC, but we weren't at that time a TOC. We weren't formally affiliated with the CNCF, so we didn't focus on, we focused on figuring out what that process would be rather than taking, you know, worrying about what the direction was. I'm actually really in favour of um, using the safe um, kind of proposal processes and reviewing those, working through those, because those could be used as a model for other SIGs that haven't even started yet. The white paper output is a valuable thing and an artifact in its own right, but it won't help us with the scalability issue. I think we get the processes right that really will help us. And I know that the, the folks at SAFE have got some, some proposals sort of coming together that may help us with the other SIGs as well. Cool. Any other thoughts here? Um, otherwise, uh, now that the SIGs process is approved, um, we'll, we'll start piloting this and hopefully um, there'll be a fast follow effect after we kind of get the, the pilot done. Yeah, I'd really like to see, you know, in fairly short order, once the safe people are, are ready with it, then presenting to us, here's our process for reviewing project. Here's our proposed process rather. Uh, and we can see whether that's something we want to use as a model. Cool. Any other thoughts? Otherwise, um, you know, we're pretty much wrapped up for uh, this time. Uh, we'll be meeting again next week for project presentations. Um, any other, anyone have any other topics or things to discuss? Any questions from the community? I do want to bring up, I mean, there was a gr great discussion going on in the chat here about the sort of fluent D, fluent bit thing from earlier, right? Um, and, you know, I was totally wrong saying that like fluent bit wasn't uh, part of the project from the start. And I think there is an interesting discussion of like, you know, when we, um, when we promote, we do it based on uh, a main project, but then there's these sub projects and sort of how do we separate out different maturity levels for sub projects versus the main project. I think Kubernetes is a great example of this. There's like a gazillion like sort of like sub projects, sub efforts that are not at the same maturity level as the rest of Kubernetes. Um, and so I don't know what the answer there is, but I think, you know, to some degree, our, all of our processes really sort of conflate the idea of project and, and specific, you know, code and or artifacts out of that. And, and one project may be mature, but it may have some parts of it that are not quite as mature. So just yeah. something for us to, to noodle on. No, definitely. I think we kind of deferred all that, you know, sub project maintenance to the top level projects themselves. Right. And so, I mean, even, yeah, even Kubernetes land, there's a ton of, uh, too many. Sub <laughs> yeah, and they're of all varying quality. Uh, I'll put it that way. So. 
so yeah, I just no disrespect to the to the to the fluent uh, fluent yeah. D project. I don't want to. I was just using them as a foil as an example. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Hi, Chris. This is Eduardo I'm from yeah. Fluent Project of Fluent D. Uh, yeah, basically, as we uh, well as a maintainer, I all often get that question from the users in conference in several places. Hey, is Fluent D an uh, incubation project? Is a graduated project? So I think that the thing is how we can try to find a good messaging for that and to avoid confusion. Yeah. yeah so, so I don't know. I don't have any proposals. I just want to say that this is something that I think is, is starting to emerge. Yeah. Or has always been. Yeah. Is this a little bit like the, um, the Kubernetes incubator? You know, should <laughs> other projects have their own incubators? Well, so the Kubernetes incubator is no more. Um, right. What we did is we replaced it, and then and Brendan wrote up a plan around this with um, SIGs can sponsor sort of side projects that are you know still within the Kubernetes scope. They're not officially part of the Kubernetes release. They're wholly within that SIG. And so you know uh, Brian in the comments here is saying something like an alternative scheduler, right? Can be experimental feature even within Kubernetes. There's some features or systems that are marked alpha versus beta versus GA. So there's a maturity going on there. Um, and then, uh, and then like the other thing we did with incubator is there's this idea of Kubernetes associated projects where it's like, there can be, you know, if folks want to self-organize, write some code, you know, discuss it on the Kubernetes Slack, you know, uh, adopt the, the CNCF, COC, all that type of stuff, they're free to do so. Um, but that doesn't come with any sort of endorsement from Kubernetes. Because one of the things we saw with the, with the incubator, and I think we see a similar thing with, with, with the sandbox is that sometimes projects would want to be part of it just to get sort of that blessing, that sort of marketing lift of, of being associated with it. And we just didn't have the, 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 the time or the capacity to be able to really render an opinion on all of these. So, yeah, it's very much like that. <laughs> um, but I guess there's a question, I think, and this is also going to like, like when does it go too far, right? Like if, if, you, if a project comes in and it's doing X and over time it changes and it's doing something completely different and it pivots into Y and it's a whole new code base, does it still like, you know, I don't know. We haven't hit that situation yet, I don't think, but it's, it's you know, theoretically possible. Yeah. All right, don't wanna, don't wanna uh, uh, <laughs> eat up people's time. I just wanted to, to correct the record there. <laughs> no, yeah, no, no, it's, yeah, it's, it's an interesting line where I think, you know, We've grown so much that projects essentially are doing their own sub projects, right? And our kind of uh, oversight there is very minimal once a project becomes accepted. We kind of defer to them to, to run with their own governance. Yeah, and define what they are. Yeah. All righty. Uh, anything else while we have uh, folks online? Otherwise, we'll uh, see each other uh, next week. I just want to um, add something real quick. Uh, Liz, I think, brought up a good point around uh, in one of our mailing lists around defining what it means uh, for a spec to graduate uh, from the CNC or graduate from incubation um, and become a graduated project. I'd love for us to noodle on that subject, as Joe likes to call it, um, at some point uh, with the wider community. Um, if we have some time on the agenda at some point. Okay, like like uh, in spec, you mean like something like a cloud events or? Like tough. Okay, got yeah, it. Yeah, we have tough, you know, we have a case study here in yep. tough, and it's kind of interesting to think, what does it mean for a spec to graduate? <laughs> I'll, uh, I'll file a GitHub issue on that, just so we don't forget, because it is a bit of a, uh, for, for a while we didn't treat specs versus like source code type projects differently. And I don't know if we want to go down route, but it's definitely a discussion that we should we should have. Yeah, there are definitely some questions that I have. Um, some things don't apply, so I would love I would love to see that. Appreciate you filing an issue, though. Thank you. No worries. All right. Um, I think uh, I think we'll wrap it up for the day and give people about ten minutes back. So uh, thank you, and uh, we'll see each other next week. All right. Take care. Bye, guys.